Hi everyone. We are going to talk on automation. Like what are the different uh, levels of automation and how you are going to develop scripts using these different levels and what are the most common practices in real-time projects. So we are going to discuss these things in my video presentation. All right, so we represent our H2K Infosys. Um, we are you verified business based in Atlanta, Georgia. We provide 100% uh, job oriented live classes. So you are going to face the faculty in each and every class and it's mutual interactive sessions and all your questions will be answered. And these are the different uh, services what we provide um, like IT trainings and special training for OPT students. We also provide consultancy on software development projects and also we provide testing services, we do job placement and technical support for the people who are working on the projects. So these are the different uh, training programs what we offer like QA testing, manual, uh, SQL, Unix, automation testing, performance, ETL, SAP, mainframe, web services, JUnit, and IBM Rational Test Manager and also the other multiple services like Java, .NET and uh, different other programs. So if you are interested you please visit our website h2kinfosys.com there we post a detailed syllabus what we are going to cover in these different training programs. Then what are the benefits you get once you enroll for the training programs with H2K Infosys. So as I mentioned before each class is a live class and also at the end of the class you get the recorded sessions. Those are mainly for your review at the end of the class like what is taught. That way you can easily review those classes by watching our recorded sessions. And also we we provide like mock interview sessions. Those are basically help us to how to face the interviews, what are the different things that will be asked. We are going to mock the real-time interviews. And also we provide all the software and material what's required for these training programs. And we have a cloud machine set up on the cloud technology where you can access our lab machines to continue practice on our tools. And also um, we are going to work on different domains during these training classes. Okay, so more about you can um, go through our website that way just you learn what are the other things um, uh, we are going to teach in these training classes. Okay, so we encourage you to please visit our website and look at the training programs and look at what we are going to talk in our training programs. Alright, so the main um, intention of this uh, video is to talk a little bit on automation testing. What are different levels of automation? Like if you look at my slide here, uh, there are three levels, the basic, intermediate and advanced. Okay, so what is the difference between these levels? Like the basic level that starts with the record and playback. It's similar to like your tape recorder, right? So you want to sing a song, then what you do? You switch on your recorder button and then once the song is recorded, then you're going to play back. Okay, so later on, just say you want to add something to your um, um, song, that's a little bit uh, difficult task, right? The same thing applies to here when you develop the scripts using the record and playback that is the basic functionality with automation tools like QTP, QuickTest Professional from HP company. So what is this no reusability? Because that is the limitation with this record and playback. So what this uh, re no reusability is, once you record a script, everything is hard coded, right? That way no, you cannot reuse that script. You cannot reuse that script or you cannot share that script 
with any other scripts. Say, for example, I'm going to talk a little bit on this reusability. Okay, so okay, so let's uh, move on to um, the QTP, and then let let's let's see what is this reusability and what are the limitations with record and playback. So, if you know a little bit about this QTP, this is what we are going to record the scripts, right? Say automation record on run settings, and then so you are going you are going to provide say if it is a web application, you have to mention the web application URL. Like what's that application you want the QTP has to open. And then here you can mention like in which browser you want to open your application because it's a web application. So this way once you mention the URL and then click OK and then so click on this record button then uh, it's going to open the application right and then you can record your script. Okay something here so yes, you put uh, the username and password and then it's going to record the script then what happens okay let me stop recording okay so this is how the script is recorded right but what's the drawback with this kind of scripting see tomorrow like today just you mentioned okay this is uh, the application URL right and tomorrow, uh, your leader, manager, like whoever it is, your boss says, hey, the application URL is changed. Okay, it's not this URL, it's something like we changed the URL of the application. So you have to run your scripts on this new URL. Or sometimes what happens is, say, you are in working in QA environment, sometimes like you are going to execute your scripts on the production environment. Maybe that URL is changed, that URL is might be different. So whatever the case, if the URL is changed, this way you are going to develop your scripts, like all 200, 300 scripts. And at one point, your lead comes and say, okay, can you please run all your scripts on this new URL? That is the application URL now. Then what you have to do? You have to open all these two or 300 scripts and then make this change, right? So what's the URL or the URL of the application? That's a nightmare because it's it's not an easy task to open each and every script because you have 300 scripts developed for the project and then that's a tedious because your lead wants the results by end of the day but you have to maintain your scripts just you have to open all the scripts and change this URL maybe that's going to take two three days time so that way no these things are not useful in real-time projects then what's the alternative like how you can work on this problem so that is where the concept of reusability is introduced you are going to reuse the scripts okay say for example in this case you're going to define a constant and then you use those constants in your scripts instead of hard coding the URLs in the scripts okay so how to do that part okay so let's uh, cancel this one and now see how you can create a project constant how you can use the reusability say the simple like instead of open the application from here right so what you have to do is uh, just you can select the first option that means you are going to open application in a different way so select the first option here and then we are going to create a function library say here you come and then select a new function library function libraries are basically the reusable components function libraries are the reusable components where you are going to define the project constants and where you are going to come up with more of this VB script or the QTP function libraries where you are going to write different functions or the subroutines so select this function library and then you are going to define a constant here simply say public constant sorry there's a typo so public constant and then you are going to say hey this is my application URL that's the constant name and then you can say here whatever that application URL so you can simply mention here so this is the application URL so you're going to just copy and paste it here 
right so this is the application url and put them in the double quotes so this is the value and this is the constant name and then you can save this function library say file save then uh, wherever just you want to save it okay on the file system uh, probably you go to c drive and then um, create a folder something um, say qtp demo right and uh, then so you can give the um, once you create just you go to that folder and then name this say my library or my first library whatever the file name so this is the library file name save it then what you're going to do in your scripts is you know like how you can open application there's a system util object right so you can use system util object in order to open application and then you're going to use the run method obviously the object contains different methods so you're going to use the run method for that object to open application so here you pretty much you're going to use this constant just copy and then paste it here that's it there is no hard coded part all you're going to use is the different constants so this way you're going to develop your two three hundred scripts you're going to use the project constants then what's the advantage here okay tomorrow if your lead says say the project application you already changed all you have to change is just one place in your library file you're going to change the URL like if say something is not this URL this URL is changed okay then you're going to change it at one place not in all 300 scripts that way your maintenance is drastically comes down so this is the concept behind the reusability this way you're going to define more of this project constants and also you're going to define more of the functions and subroutines anyway we're going to discuss more on that like how to create your the next level is uh, the shared object repositories that part right the advanced level complete uh, scripting so um, we'll discuss that part in my next video all right um, so anyway like if you're interested um, in any of uh, the training programs so this is uh, these are the some of the reviews like what the people says who attended our training programs about uh, different training programs like the Java and uh, okay so then .NET um, and QA courses and also this is our website so where you can um, go through and what are the different services we provide All right so this is our contacts anyway um, so you can contact us by email or by phones so if you have any questions if you have any interest in any of our training programs all right thank you thanks for your time thanks for watching us thank you bye